Hello everybody and welcome to Dining for Women's Google Hangout. Today we are featuring Women's Microfinance Initiative. This is our featured program for the month of December. Right now I will introduce you to our two guests. We have Laura Haight, Communications Director for Dining for Women. Hi Laura. Hey Vina. Hey everybody. Hi. Laura organizes this entire, schedules the entire Google Hangout and is our tech guru. So you may see her come in and out of the entire Hangout. We have with us today Robin Neidert from Women's Microfinance Initiative or WMI as it is known. WMI is a nonprofit that was started by a group of professional women in the Washington DC area. They make loans to impoverished women in certain areas of the world who have no access to commercial banking and they offer affordable and collateral free loans. So Robin, why don't you share your program with us? Thank you very much, Vina, and thank you everybody who's listening today and, and any other day for Dining for Women's support for WMI. We are very honored to have gotten a $45,000 grant, and believe me, we are going to put it to good use. As Vina said, WMI is a microfinance program only for rural women who live in very remote areas of countries in East Africa. We only work in Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya because we're a very small organization. And working in um, uh, an area where that's contiguous like that means our women can all meet each other from these different countries and it means we get some economies of scale. So I put together a little PowerPoint, which hopefully we can take a look at these pictures, and I'll just give you like a five or six minute background on what WMI does. This group of women, I wanted to make sure everybody got to see the picture because this is the core group of women who run WMI in the rural loan hubs. We have 14 loan hubs in Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania, and it is these loan hubs are run by rural women. WMI's whole concept was that we were going to build infrastructure in the villages where we work. We did not want to build a large NGO, a big bureaucracy here in the United States. Goodness knows there are plenty of those already. So we trained the women in the loan hub to run the loan program, and that is one big difference that WMI um, experiences from a lot of other microfinance programs out there. This is our building. This is our headquarters in Biobo, Uganda. Um, we, we have built a building in a rural area of Uganda to be our headquarters because we wanted our headquarters to be in the rural area and not in a, an urban area because we are a rural loan program. It is very important to have something as visible as a building because it is basically a symbol to people that you are a serious organization that is operating permanently in these villages. Many times everybody wants to know what do the women do, what kind of businesses do they have. Well a lot of them will start in some kind of agricultural business. It'll be growing tomatoes, it'll be growing avocados which by the way in East Africa are the size of small baseballs. They're gigantic. Um, and then they will be value added and that's one of the things we work hard to emphasize in the WMI training that the more value you add to a raw product, the uh, more profit margin you're going to develop. We do not ever tell women what kind of business to be in. It is important that they choose their own businesses, they know what their own strengths are, their own weaknesses are, their contacts are, and so they learn very quickly what kind of business they are suited to run, and that also fills a, need, fills a need in their local economy. We do not encourage anybody to go into any kind of business that exports a handicraft, because then you're dependent on an export market and currency fluctuation. We want them to be integrated into their own community and their own economy so that their businesses actually can be self-sufficient in the environment that they live in. Um, one really important aspect of the WMI loan program is that women are in it for two years. They get four loans of six months each, so that's 24 months, 
During that time period, their loans can go from $150 up to $250, and after that, they graduate to the formal economy. They either become self-financing or they become clients or customers of banks that we've developed um, relationships with. This is very important because it allows WMI to continue to be a rural microfinance program. If we just gave women loans over and over again, year after year after year, then we'd just be a bank. And that's not what we are. We want to be at the very bottom of the pyramid, giving women their first start. We work with some extremely marginalized groups, like Maasai women in central Kenya and in central Tanzania. The Maasai have been discriminated by their governments in, in many different ways, but mostly through the taking of their land by the government. They're often relocated to areas where there's no water, they're not allowed to grow local crops. So we feel like working with the Maasai women is an important aspect of what we do because they really don't have any alternative except us to get a loan, get business training, and start a business. We are very proud that the women in our loan program learn how to run the program themselves, and we do a lot of training so that they're computer literate, so that they understand how to do their own budgets and manage their own loan programs. Because our ladies graduate after two years, it means we can recycle their funds. So each loan hub we have, each of these 14 loan hubs, becomes self-sustaining. The income the loan hub gets from the interest on the loans pays all of the overhead for running the loan program. And we always wanted to be here at WMI um, in the United States. We wanted to be the scaffold to get the local loan programs in place, and then they have to be self-sustaining and run on their own. With the income that's generated, the women can also provide other services in the community, like we do breast cancer screening, we do cervical cancer screening, we do girls groups to educate girls about sexually transmitted diseases and entrepreneurship training. It's really amazing when the loan hubs become up and running and cash flow positive, now they can start to branch out and provide other services to the community. Um, WMI is all about women's solidarity. So the women, as I think I said before, in Kenya and Tanzania have all come to our loan hub in Biobo. The eight other programs in Uganda have come to the loan hub in Biobo so that, so that the women can interact and exchange um, ideas and also because it is a peer-to-peer -peer program. It is all about women helping other women who just like them come into the program and start and operate successful businesses. We are really happy that women learn how to grow their businesses and diversify something, their businesses, like someone who starts in growing tomatoes and might start making meals by the side of the road, that might start adding um, drinks to the side of the road, that she might add other stands. So their businesses start very tiny, but they can grow rather large. Um, WMI's main and bottom line is we are all about financial inclusion. We want to get women into the business sector in their countries. We want to get them into the regulated financial sector in their countries. Um, and we want to continue support to, to uh, support them on the business training. So that's basically what our program is. Again, thank you so much for supporting us with the grant and Vina. If people would like to ask questions, I'd be happy to answer any I have. Yeah. Thank you so much, Robin, for that presentation. Unfortunately, we were not able to see the slides that you were sharing, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your program. You gave us examples of what the women use those loans for. Could you walk us through a story or two of one particular person who started off with a small loan, started with a small business, and today is somewhere else, is doing something much larger and bigger? Well, um, yeah, Olive Olimba, for example, started just by getting small sacks of maize and grinding maize in the local maize mill and then selling the, the ground maize, which is used for pancakes and bread and things like that. And then gradually she realized that other farmers were growing small amounts of grain but did not really have the capacity to enlarge their 
their plots because they just didn't have enough money to do that. They'd sell the grain, buy more seed, sell the grain, buy more seed. So what Olive did is she would come and give them money when they had just planted their their little plot of land. And it, the, the money was so that she could come and, and buy the grain from them when it was time to harvest. And that way she put together little little plots of grain for various farmers and could get a large amount of grain and use it as consignment to a hotel, to a school. So by aggregating these small patches, she was able to take on larger and larger clients. And that is, in fact, what many of them are going to do. They actually are injecting capital to their local economies. Good, wonderful. Now, in prior conversations that you and I have had, you talked about how the banks actually did send an armored van to your local hub to collect the deposits. Can you explain how that collaboration works? Yes, we we actually are working with Post Bank in Uganda who does that for us in our local loan hubs there. This is a very big deal because for a woman to get to a bank, First, she has to have time away from home, and it's maybe a two-hour trip there and a two-hour trip back. So it's a half a day just to go to the bank to make a deposit or make a withdrawal, plus she has to pay for the transport, plus she has to figure out somebody to watch her kids or take her children with her. So it's a very big deal for a woman to have to go to town to go to a bank. Now that we have hundreds and hundreds of women in our loan hubs who are doing banking, it is it is worthwhile for the bank to send the van to us, and then women only have to come to their local village center every other week when the van comes, and they can do their banking right there in the village. This is really helpful for them because it encourages savings. It means they can deposit into their savings account and also do withdrawals on a time frame that is convenient to them. We very much encourage savings. Savings are a fundamental part of any successful kind of microfinance program and one thing you have to do to encourage savings is make it possible to save. I know people have probably said about saving and um, banking through your cell phone, which, which yes has advantages, but there is something very direct about being able to walk into the teller in the mobile banking van, talk to her about your account, do the physical withdrawal and cost of money. That's that's been extremely um, successful for us and very convenient. For them. Now, would this be the same bank that this potential uh, woman would walk up to and work on a larger commercial loan? So WMI yes. has started the connection. Okay. Oh, that WMI has definitely started the connection. We take the women to the bank. The women are in loan groups of 20 women. And when they graduate, those who want bank loans, well, we will take them to the bank together, help them fill out their forms, introduce them to the credit manager who will be in charge of their loan. We really like to think we have changed the way banks have started to look at rural women. One of the big issues about why banks don't lend to rural women and in all fairness of bank is because the women do not have any track record of repaying a loan, they don't have collateral, and they don't have any financial literacy training. So after two years in our program, they have acquired all of those characteristics, and now they're ready to be customers that the bank can serve, and they're ready to knowledgeably use the financial instruments that the bank has to offer. Now, microfinance has reached so many developing countries and so many different communities that have trouble with dealing with the commercial banks. So who do you experience pushback from in the communities that you have worked with? Well, of course, the first people we experience pushback from are their money lenders because they're out there lending at 10% a day, 100% a month, outrageous, outrageous interest rates. Um, so we get pushback from them. Um, we also get pushback sometimes from men in the community who want to know why we don't make less men. And the reason we focus on women is because of all of the historical literature we read on this topic, women will use the profits from a business to focus on improving the household. We survey our women every six months, all of the surveys and the data um, is on our website, and women's top priorities for use of the profits from the businesses are school fees, improving nutrition, and health care for the family. So it's 
Um, that's why we focus on women. And when we get pushback from men, we do talk to them about it and explain it. And quite frankly, in Lone Hubs where we work, the businesses women start really turn into family businesses. The husbands help, the children help. Everybody in the family realizes that this loan is a resource that's valuable. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to start a business and work your way out of property. And it's quite striking the way the husband help the businesses. We can also get pushback from um, established microfinance organizations that maybe see us coming into their marketplace a little bit because we go to the rural area and offer the microfinance opportunity. What institutionalized microcredit wants is people to come to them in the urban areas, and it's just not feasible for rural women to do that. That's wonderful. Uh, that must develop such a wonderful sense of empowerment for these women to have such an important status in their families. Now, moving on to your loan hubs, and how exactly does the peer pressure work among these women? I mean, well, is it always positive? Yeah, I, it it. I'm not sure. We think it's always positive. It's always authentic, that's for sure. The loan hub, the women are organized into groups of 20. They cross-guarantee each other's loans because they have no collateral. They don't have physical or monetary collateral, so we use what we call social collateral. So if one woman doesn't repay the loan in the group of 20, the other 19 are responsible for it. And if they do have to repay somebody to make someone's loan payment, they will go to that woman in the group. And basically sit in her living room until she pays it back. They are all at, they're all experiencing the same thing. They're all having deaths of children, spouses, um, extreme disease, hunger. And they don't accept that as an excuse for not be paying a loan. So we like to say we put the loan structure in place, but it's up to the women to use what they think are the appropriate means in the village to, to make sure that the loans get paid. And they're, they're quite good at it, I must say. Well, what role would the WMI person or coordinator play in this part? Because I have uh, spoken to self-help groups in India where unfortunately in some of the groups you would find a kind of peer pressure working in a not so positive way where they threw the widow out believing that she would not be you know, able to pay back her loan. So does WMI interject at that point if something like that happens? Well, there, you know, WMI, as I said, we provide the structure. We as an organization don't run the loan hubs. The local women run the loan hubs. And what goes on in a particular group of 20 is up to that group of 20 women. We, you know, one of the differences between where we work in rural East Africa and many other places where microfinance is popular, like India, is we don't have this issue of women taking out multiple loans and getting into open indebtedness because we work basically in areas that are unserved by any financial institutions, period. So we, we also find that rural villages are a very cohesive kind of place, and there's a very vibrant social network. The women in the group of 20 know each other. In order to come into the WMI loan program, you have to be brought in by an existing borrower. She has to vouch for you, say, I think this will be a good borrower. I've, I've seen her industriousness. I've seen her start a little business and now want to grow it. So we really don't find that we have that problem. OK. That's wonderful. Well, as we wrap up, Robin, what are your broader plans for the region or for WMI in particular? Uh, we get, you know, we are a very small organization. We have a $250,000 annual budget in the United States we're run by volunteers. It's a volunteer hands-on board, hands board of directors. So we have, we get requests probably every day from different community groups in sub-Saharan Africa, India, every place you can imagine to start microfinance projects. Because we're so small, we can't do that. So we're looking at things like trying to put together a, really a how-to package so that we can allow other groups who want to get started, have some kind of template about how you structure and what the operating parameters are for a loan program. We're also looking at different groups who have come to us who already started their own microfinance program and have an infrastructure in place 
that just need to develop banking relationships and be brought into to higher levels of loans that we can provide that kind of expertise to. There's a lot of different, you know, there's a lot of different avenues for growth here. We just have to be careful to make sure we choose ones that don't overtax the village infrastructure we have, and that more than anything can be monitored and oversighted because the link on the ground is the most important link we find. You have got to have responsible, vested, committed people on the ground who are running the loan programs in the villages. And that's just key. That's crucial. So looking for more organizations like that that are committed to what they're doing, I think it's a really viable expansion opportunity for us. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have for this uh -huh. hangout today. We at Dining for Women would like to wish WMI all success on this program and for all your future plans. Thank you, everybody, for being part of this. Thank you, Robin, and thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.